I have found dozens of YouTube links to places that give many tones to listen to at night or anytime you want to relax. I listen to one every night because they're very pleasant and relaxing. Many use alpha or delta waves. I like the tones on some of the new meditation links, in new meditation links, uh, the most, but many of the other links make claims that I find dubious, like melatonin release or whole body and mind restoration at the cellular level. I find that unlikely, even with the solfeggio tones. I would appreciate your opinion of these claims and whether you recommend any as being most effective. Thank you. So this is a really cool comment uh, because I have some friends that make uh, frequency music, which is just what I, I call music that um, works with brainwaves. So just to get everyone on the same page, different brainwaves are associated with different states of consciousness. Most of our life is spent, like the waking life is spent with uh, beta wave ranges. And whenever beta waves are dominant in your brain, and this is assessed via e EEG, so lots of studies have been done, EEG studies have been done with the you know, different um, electrodes on the head to detect the dominant frequency ranges in the brain. Beta is associated with alert, awakeness, um, sort of the thinking state. There are also some that I'm not going to go over here, like gamma or lambda, that are even higher frequency. Uh, we won't go into those right now. Uh, we're going to focus on the ones that tend to relax. So whenever you begin to relax, for instance, just by deep breathing, your brain starts to shift from beta into alpha. So you can see through this visualization here, the brain waves go from more frequent to a slower frequency. This slower frequency is associated with mental and physical relaxation. If you slow the brain down a bit more, it goes into theta. Theta is associated with creativity, insight, deep meditation, and dreaming. And I'll also be giving you a reference for some of these statements over here. Um, so for instance, theta will become dominant during REM, but not during deep sleep. So it is associated with some creative thought. And then there's delta waves, which are very slow waves that occur during deep sleep. Uh, and that's whenever you just, you, some people can be conscious with delta, although it's, they tend to be uh, people who've meditated for many, many years. Um, but this is also the brain waves that are associated with just a loss of awareness of your body. So this may begin to occur with some yoga nidra meditations, but also tissue repair during sleep. And I'm highlighting this sentence down here, tissue repair, as potentially one of the reasons why some meditations may make claims about cellular repair or um, you know, resetting certain biorhythms. Because the fact is, is during sleep, that's when our body does the most healing. It does a lot of detoxing. It does a lot of cellular regeneration and repair. And so one way of looking at meditations on YouTube that claim, you know, have these claims, it may be that they are using more delta waves and their reasoning that because they have lots of, you know, because they use delta waves in their music or in the tones, that that's more likely to support body processes that occur during sleep. Are there any studies showing that meditation can, you know, correct DNA damage or, you know, cellular youthing or any of these things? No. It is probably a well-meaning um, attempt to help people understand why certain types of frequency music would be helpful. So I don't think there's malicious intent, um, but I do think that it's useful to know that there, even though there isn't any studies on it, there is some basis for why that would be rational, that certain types of brain waves, because they're associated with deep sleep whenever your body is regenerating, could theoretically support 
generation. Would it support it as much as whenever your full body is asleep? Probably not, but I don't know that. I really don't know that. Some of these uh, tracks also overlay these onto one another. And that's whenever you see a track that says like alpha plus theta, it's something that maybe begins with alpha and then goes into theta and maybe it goes back and forth. Um, so I will, uh, in the email that we send it at the end, I will attach this article for any of you who are, who are interested in what actual evidence there is behind this. This is a really great review article that goes back to the 70s. And interestingly, most of the research on this was done in the 70s because we've had EEG since the 60s and 70s. And they were really into what is the effect of different meditations and different meditation types on brain waves. So this is a, a review of data from like the late 60s through April 2020. Uh, and I'll, I'll hand this out as well. So if you're looking, if you're trying to consider whether or not you want to try some of these frequency, you know, this frequency music, the first thing I would say is to look at how it makes you feel. And the reason why I say this is that it has become much more popular in the last five years for people to produce this kind of music and explore it. Some people are better than others where I've listened to some tracks that um, are for anxiety relief and I actually feel more anxiety. And I don't, yeah, I can see Carrie shaking her head, yes. And so you can usually feel that within the first one to three minutes. So in this case, trust what your body is saying rather than what you're reading on the screen because they might've had the intention to create a, you know, music that is very healing, but they might not have had the technical knowledge needed to execute it. So I tend to look for videos that are over five years old. And the reason why I do that is that for whatever reason, in the last five years, there have been a lot more people interested in this. If someone did it over five years ago, they're more likely a pro. Um, for instance, I'll show you in the next slide, one of my favorite um, uh, albums that you can access via YouTube was created like 10 or 15 years ago. And so there are people who were into this much, much earlier <clears throat> who know how to do it, do it well, um, but always your body is the judge. Um, if something doesn't feel right to you, turn it off and switch it to something else. And my general uh, recommendation is 528 hertz is a really great go-to. So even if you put, just push, you know, uh, relaxation 528 hertz into the, the search bar, <clears throat> 528 hertz seems to be in myself, but also in other people I've spoken with about it. It creates really heart opening feelings, like a lot of expansive feelings in the heart. And it's one of the solfeggio frequencies. Um, also, you can think about how deep you want to go. So if you think about the previous slide where we looked at the different levels of deepness, if you're looking at something morning and midday, you only want to go into alpha. You don't want to go too deep because you're going to be coming back to beta wave state, which is alert and thinking. So you, you probably don't want to go too deep. If it's in the evening after you've done all of your... Um, I mean, the only exception here might be theta if you want to use it for creative work. Um, evening, I would suggest alpha or theta because alpha just gives physical and emotional relaxation. Theta <clears throat> is a bit more deeper relaxation. Um, in bedtime, I'd suggest theta and delta. Uh, so this could also help ease you into a sleep state because it starts by listening to, for instance, music with theta and delta. You're already priming your nervous system to synchronize with the brain waves that are dominant during sleep. And yeah, this is just a regurgitation of that. The other thing is for there, there are therapeutic meditations or sometimes people have an interest in using frequency music for therapeutic purposes. Theta waves, and I don't, there aren't, there isn't, there aren't studies on this, but 
um, from my personal experience and from looking into this specifically because I've been interested in how music could augment uh, meditation, theta waves are really ideal for accessing older memories. So for instance, if you're doing uh, some work where you're recalling childhood memories or you wanting to work through um, some old patterns, playing theta music or theta frequency in the background may actually help you recall those memories. They become more accessible. Um, if you begin and end with an alpha bridge, which is just deep breathing and feeling into your body, be sure to end with one so that you can remember what you experienced during the theta wave state. And if you want to learn about what that means, I recommend the book Awakening the Mind by Anna Wise. She did lots of EEG research years back uh, and uh, did a lot of um, studies of, of uh, expert meditators to understand what kind of consciousness states correlate with different brainwave patterns. And she explains it in a really easy to understand way for instance if you wanted to say like i don't i don't like any of these meditations i'm finding on youtube i want to do my own this book will help you understand how to do your own and what are the steps to really create a, a, a meditation that's deep and supportive so the final thing i want to end with if you are interested in giving it a try and don't know where to start my number one recommendation is uh, source vibrations on YouTube. And there's a specific playlist, Solfeggio Harmonics Volume 1. If you begin with 174, then 258 or 285, 396, 417, and end with 528, it's this is this could be a meditation on its own. Um, 528 is something I have listened to as of this morning over 1700 times in the past three years. This is the most played track on my personal playlist. I play it before I do meetups. I play it before I do uh, patient sessions. I play it before I do creative work because it really primes me into heart open state. So if you want to experience, just explore a bit, this is a great, a great resource to begin that exploration. And let me check in on the comments. Oh, beautiful. Brian has some excellent recommendations. The Rain Rain app, Desert Wind, I Mask It. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Hope a burglar never breaks in at night because you're out. Um, oh, something else I should mention. Um, alpha, you can easily induce alpha just by deep breathing. If you want to induce theta without a track <clears throat> or even with a track, shamanic drumming brings you into theta. Yes, we have a, Joe is a fan. So it, so these are, and they're also, um, you know, I, I think that a lot of these, like Calm Whale is also, uh, he's a hand drum, hand drummer that is fantastic. And Zach says, iPhone has ambient noise built in if you want to use it. That's an interesting point, ambient noise. You can also explore different types of uh, noise on YouTube. One of my favorite ones, which it's, it's been a while since I've listened to, was the sound of deep space, where there were some times where it just, I don't know, it's sort of like, a, but it's a really beautiful deep space sound. So playing around with white noise, different types of white noise, is also beautiful, but also um, rainstorms, thunderstorms are great for working. Ah, oh, yes, Kate mentions Joe Dispenza is doing similar studies in San Diego. And Donna mentions Glenn Harold. 
Excellent. Okay. So let's take a little bit of a break. How many people have listened to this type of music out of curiosity? Have. Yeah. Okay, we've a good maybe 50 ish percent, if not more. Oh, Joe mentions indigenous drums, Tibetan bells, yes. Oh, so sulfate your harmonics. Um, I can. So she, so Joe asks, um, can you speak to various Hertz frequencies on that? The Hertz frequency, the, the ranges of frequencies that I have um, posted on, uh, oh my gosh, let me see if I can find this. Um, I can speak to it, but not very intelligently. Uh, in that, <laughs> I'll be totally honest with you. So I have a friend who um, has worked a lot with frequency music, and there are there's a mathematical relationship between different uh, frequency ranges that seem to just be um, for instance, if you so it, the frequency ranges specifically for the sulfedger frequencies, tend to be traced back to like uh, medievalish range music, meaning that there were pitches that people tended to sing hymns in, or um, the early, monks, the early monks used yeah. them. Yeah, monks tended to sing at a certain pitch. So for instance, five uh, 28 hertz uh, is at the pitch of C. So for instance, even if you were to play C in the background, that would technically get you at the certain range. But for instance, it's a, it's a harmonic range. So you can sing at different harmonic ranges. And it's a suggestion that there are certain harmonic ranges uh, that are just feel better biologically. And there was a video I watched a while back about this where um, there were some songs sort of tuned to um, the solfeggio frequencies versus other frequencies. And the solfeggio frequencies did just feel better in my body. So it, it's something that a lot of people are, um, I'm not the most intelligent person to speak to about this, but there it's it's about the pitch relationship and how certain frequency ranges and certain pitch ranges seem to feel just more comfortable to the physical body, the biology. 